we can give them all kinds of algorithms and functions, uh, you know, with nifty uh, math and machine learning that are modeled on human affect and animal affect. Uh, but this is not, it's, we're so far not coming anywhere near giving machines feelings like what you and I experience when we talk about having feelings. Uh, right now we give them some functions that behave in some cases like emotions function. And here, here's the other really boring part, uh, get ready to yawn for those of you who aren't into the technology here. Uh, and this is um, deliberately worded like this, because scientists are very precise about what we are and aren't doing. So we'll say, you know, machines are now being given internal signaling regulatory prioritization and resource reallocation mechanisms that indicate things such as, here's one more mouthful, an important goal has been thwarted, time to interrupt planning system, request generation, consideration of alternate strategies, interrupt attention system, look for opportunities to implement an alternate strategy. If an expert human asks what state the system is in, you have, hey, robot, what's going on? Um, then respond with a label uh, here where it's uh, modulated by the load required to process the thwarted goal. Lots of load, bigger N. Uh, if a non-expert asks, then depending on how big N is, have the system say the robot is frustrated, slightly frustrated, hugely frustrated, right? People just want to know is the robot frustrated or not. Is the robot really frustrated? No, the robot has all these mechanisms that are trying to imitate something like that. Does it really feel frustrated like we do? No, it doesn't actually. Uh, we don't know how to build something like that. So we scientists give all this long-winded uh, detail, um, and then the press comes by and they say, machines have emotion. <laughs> they have feelings. They feel like we do. And people who aren't scientists out there go, oh dear, now, you know, Picard and those people have given machines feelings and they're exactly like us now. Uh, it's not quite like that. Uh, it's, it's just that it doesn't translate <laughs> very well. Uh, a theologian came up to me the first time I presented on all the gobbledygook mechanisms and she said, how can you give machines emotion? That's the last thing that separates people and machines. And I was like, huh? No, it's not. Uh, Okay, that's the quick answer. <laughs> um, and the longer answer, which you know, would, would take uh, a long time, I encourage you to go on this journey if you're interested, uh, is that there's a lot more that we haven't even begun to even understand well enough in ourselves to know how to implement. So if somebody says they've written a, a, sub, you know, a consciousness subroutine, and there are people saying that, you know, the machine prints out, I am conscious, uh, ask questions about it, okay? <laughs> Don't just take it on face value. Uh, there are aspects of these that people are trying to build, and that's interesting. Um, and maybe they can be built, right? In science, we have to allow for that, right? There's, it's, maybe it's possible. Uh, you, can, you can emphasize the yet. We do not yet see any way to build these. Um, or you can emphasize that, you know, the, the best minds, you know, at the, all the different universities working on this get together and talk about this regularly. And as far as I can tell, you know, listening to them and interacting with them, nobody has an inkling how we're going to do any of this with foreseeable hardware, software, and quantum computing and biological computers right now, too. Uh, doesn't mean it can't be done. just means that we're really not close. Um, what if it could be done? What if... Uh, somebody did succeed in just, you know, physically constructing a robot that uh, really appeared to function exactly like us. And for some people, that's the test. It equals us if it functions like us. Uh, would that mean that's all we are, uh, that we're only material stuff? And again, no, um, it doesn't. Uh, and I like this quick example of aliens stumbling across instructions to build a radio. And the instructions describe how to build it out of purely material mechanisms. And they follow them, and it comes out just like that. And they turn the dial, and it works, and it plays music. Um, and wow, now they know they've understood music. It's what this physical device creates, right? Without fully understanding you know, radio waves and all that stuff, they could assume that since they built this and it functions like that, that it uh, works. In fact, you'll hear language like emerging. Consciousness emerges. Uh, and I think the, when you hear people say something's emerging, it's just a shorthand for saying we haven't a clue how <laughs> it works. You know, um, We'll just sort of use the word emerge. Uh, so keep questioning about things like that too. Um, so if someday we could build 
a robot that functions like us, uh, you know, would that mean people are fully explained, it's just the material stuff? Uh, no, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that we are fully understood. It would just mean that we had matched some of the functions. Uh, it would be impressive. Uh, a lot of people are working on it, uh, and it may happen. Uh, we don't know how to do it now, and we don't know how to build humans. Uh, Rod Brooks and I have had some fun talking about this, uh, obviously other than the, um, the fun natural procreation way of building humans. Um, we, we don't know how to just assemble them uh, in the way that Rod's trying to do in his lab. Um, will we ever know how to build a robot like us? And I, I don't, you know, none of us knows exactly. However, uh, as you know or will discover very shortly, uh, I'm a practicing Christian. And uh, as such, I, I enjoy reading the Bible. I enjoy learning from it. Um, one of the scriptures in particular that's really compelling as a scientist is this one that says, uh, this is from 1 Corinthians 13. It's read as the love chapter at a lot of people's weddings. Uh, if you read on to the bottom of it, you get to this part. Um, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully known. Now Paul here is talking about uh, in the afterlife, we will see God face to face if we make it to that, that other realm. Uh, and we are fully known now. We uh, then will know fully. And I think, hmm, gosh, you know, some of us scientists kind of want to be there in that other realm asking the author of all knowledge of all space and time and, and experience, uh, you know, how are we made, right? And I believe we are fully known. So I believe those answers are there. And maybe we really could know them, at least in that realm, if not sooner. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.